The ESA Accelerator is a funding program by the European Commission and the European Innovation Council for the purpose of funding disruptive innovations and deep tech technologies. Deep tech very often are technologies that have very long development times and they also require a lot of capital, usually because of intense hardware developments. The ESA Accelerator generally advertises investing into startups and innovation technologies themselves. They don't all have to be B2B and they don't all have to have a hardware component, but generally speaking, Speaking, the target is deep tech and specifically the idea of turning science into commercial applications. So what type of funding is available? There's a grant component and an equity component. The grant is up to two and a half million. This is the maximum grant budget. And there's an equity component supplied by the EIC fund. So the grant is in non-dilutive financing. The equity component is in exchange for company ownership. So this is basically a typical VC type investment. And just for the general rule, there's a thing called technology readiness levels. I'm not going to go into full detail but generally speaking, the ESC accelerator begins at TL6, all with companies that are about to reach TL6. So TL5 basically is the lower limit. The ground component is designed to bring companies from TL5 to TL8, and the equity component is basically for the whole spectrum. It can finance any activity from TL5 to TL9, but the end goal of the equity investment always has to be TL9 because it's the purpose of the accelerator. It's about scaling up companies. So when it comes to which companies are successful in the ESC accelerator, it's a bit of a gray zone because there's no one rule that can always say that this company is going to succeed, this company is going to fail. The ESC accelerator has certain rules when it comes to the size or what the role the ESC wants to play, but there are always exceptions. There are always companies that are maybe borderline or don't really fit into the mission of the accelerator, but they are financed and companies that fit into the mission of the accelerator, but they're not financed. So it's very hard to say which companies practically actually succeed, but generally speaking, what you want to look at is the technology and the commercial traction. Technology, obviously deep tech scientific is always a plus. If you look at the companies that are actually finance and the list is published after every call, then you can see that a lot of them are very scientific, but they're also pure SaaS companies, pure software companies that are financed. But generally speaking, you want to have a very innovative, cutting edge, unique technology. This has to be something that is significantly different from what all the other competitors are doing. Usually most companies that are financed are B2B. B2C is also possible, but just looking at the statistics of all the companies that have been financed, most of them were B2B. And of course, there are certain themes. Climate change is a big theme. Then the pandemic was a big theme, health in general. There are certain topics that are going to be published every year that are going to impact which types of technologies are interesting. And there are some things that are just evergreen. Energy storage is going to be evergreen for a long time. Medical technology is always going to be relevant. What other sectors, let's say in the direction of transport or marketing technologies are definitely less financed in the accelerator. And then the commercial part. So the commercial part is extremely important because the accelerator follows a three-step application process with the last step being a jury interview. And the jury is usually consisting of people who have some kind of investment background and they have to make sure that this project can be executed. It is realistic. The team knows what it's doing. And of course, they're going to look at things like the product market fit. So especially for the jury interview, what is really, really important is the commercial health of the company. Of course, if it's a very small startup and a company that's a TL5 and they don't have a prototype that they can already sell or that they can already give their customers to use, it's very difficult to develop traction. And for many companies, it's very difficult to have any early revenues. But what is really critical is a lot of validation when it comes to the traction. So this can be a letter of intent. This can be a future customer already using a prototype and just testing the prototype, maybe investing their own resources. But things like letters of intent, early revenues, customers, and just general market interest, anything that can tell the jury that there is a product market fit or there's a very high chance it's going to be a product market fit, that's going to be helpful. In the same way, if there are gatekeepers in order to access the market and these gatekeepers are not on board yet, the jury might also get cold feet because this might be too high risk for them. The ESC accelerator should be high risk, but when it comes to the commercial strategy, it's always good to have a validated product market fit, even if it is in the very early stages. Thanks for watching.